Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the whole of Edexcel GCSE Physics Astronomy. If you'd like to follow along with this video, over my website you can download my notes and flashcards. Ok, so this is our solar system, and there are 8 planets in the solar system. So in the middle of the solar system we have the Sun, and this is a star. The closest planet to the Sun is Mercury. Next to that we have Venus, then we have us over here on Earth, then Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. So the Sun is in the middle of the solar system and this provides all the heat and light for the rest of the planets. So Mercury which is really close to the Sun is going to be really hot but Neptune which is really far away from the Sun will be much colder. So we know that within our solar system we have planets and we have stars but there's also a lot more in our solar system. We have satellites and these can be natural or man-made. So a satellite is just something that's in orbit. So a natural satellite could be something like the moon, which orbits around Earth, or it could be man-made, something like a camera or a telescope. We also have asteroids and comets. Now different scientists have had different ideas about what the solar system looked like over time. So the first model we had for the solar system was the geocentric model. And this is when we thought that Earth was in the center. So Earth was right in the middle and all of the other planets orbited around Earth. This is probably because back then we didn't have the ability to go into space and have a look. We can only look at space from Earth, so to us it looked like the Sun went around Earth and then back down and around Earth again. So we thought we were in the centre and everything went around us. The current model of the solar system is the heliocentric model. And this is when the Sun is in the centre. And this is the current model that we know to be true. Now gravity is a really strong force in our solar system and it's a force that draws objects towards things. Gravity forces any objects down towards the centre of the Earth. The Sun has such a large gravitational pull that it traps all of the other planets in orbit around it. Now we only really notice gravity when things are really big. Gravity does happen to smaller things too, it's just not as noticeable. For example, you have a gravitational pull yourself. You, have, you trap atoms around you which are stuck in orbit, just like the Sun traps all of the other planets around it in orbit. Now, gravity on Earth is around 10 newtons per kilogram. And this is because of Earth's size. And gravity depends on the planet's size. So, the, for example, the Moon, which is much smaller, will have a smaller gravitational pull. So the Moon has a gravitational field of around 2 newtons per kilogram. So, we said that in our solar system we have stars, and we need to look at the life cycle of a star. So all stars begin as a nebula, and this is a big cloud of dust and gas. And over time gravity is going to pull all of this dust and gas together to form a protostar. Now, after a protostar has been formed, it will turn into a main sequence star. So this is the typical type of star. This is when the star enters a long, stable period. So not a lot is really happening. It's very happy doing nuclear fusion and just continuing to be a star. Now, after a main sequence star, we have two different options. So the first option is it can become a red giant. And this is for smaller stars like our sun. But the other option is it can become a red supergiant. Now, red giants and red supergiants has run out of all its hydrogen, so it can't continue nuclear fusion. Instead, it gets really, really big now, a red giant can then form a white dwarf. And this is just the really hot and dense core of the star. But a red supergiant then goes on to be a supernova. And this is a really big and bright explosion. After the supernova, it can become one of two things. It can become a neutron star, which is this tiny little star over here. Or it can become a black hole. So they are a series of changes that a star will go through over its lifetime. Now, redshift is used to show that the universe is expanding. So let's break down what redshift actually is. So if you imagine this dot to be a police car, and the police car is still, so it's stationary. Imagine it begins playing its siren, so a really loud noise is being emitted, and it's even in all directions, so the waves come out with exactly the same distance between each one. Now imagine that the same police car begins moving in this direction. As it plays a siren, at the back of the police car, the waves are spread out. And at the front, the waves are compressed. Now hopefully you remember from the waves topic, 
that if the waves are really compressed together, they have a high frequency. And this can often be shown as blue colours. And if things are really spread out, they have a low frequency. So they have a reddish colour. Now, this diagram over here shows these two colours in action. So if things are moving towards us, they have a much higher frequency than things which are moving away, which have a lower frequency. So we've got the blue and the red. Now in space we can detect these frequencies and put them on diagrams like this. And we can take them at one period of time, to so say this is one year, and this is the second year. Now we can see that the lines that we've measured have begun shifting over to the red side. So we can use this to say that things are moving away from us, or that the universe is expanding, and that everything is moving away from everything else. Now if I was to say to you about the creation of the universe, you'd probably be able to tell me something about the Big Bang Theory. And this is one of the two theories we have to, to explain how the universe began. We have the Steady State Theory and the Big Bang Theory. So the Steady State Theory says that the universe has always existed as it does now. So nothing has ever changed and nothing will ever change. Now, as the universe expands, we say that new matter has been created. So we're saying the universe is still expanding, it's still getting bigger, but every time it does get bigger, create new stuff to go in it. So this means the density is always consistent. The Big Bang Theory that says all of the matter in the whole universe once took up a really small space. So every star, every planet, every comet, everything in the whole universe was once all in a really small space. And this space was very dense and very hot. And then it says there was a really big explosion. All of the matter exploded apart and went in all different directions, and then the universe began expanding. Now, we can use redshift to describe both theories, as both theories say the universe is expanding. But we have some evidence that only backs up the Big Bang Theory, and this is CMB radiation, which has been detected in the universe to suggest that the universe was once really hot and dense. So this piece of evidence is why the Big Bang Theory is the current accepted theory for the creation of the universe. If this video helped with your physics revision, please subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have.